Hey guys, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning. And today I'm going to walk you through um, what we are gonna try to do to keep our skills fresh over the summer. And um, today I'm gonna show you these pre-K, preschool summer review activity books that I've been making and how we're gonna use them, how I'm gonna make them multi-sensory with some different manipulatives. And uh, we're gonna be using these over the summer so that we don't lose any of the skills that we practice. These are super great because um, once I laminate them, uh, we are gonna be able to just take them in the car if we need to with a dry erase marker because everything can be done with a dry erase marker if need be and we can do that or we can use them at home with all of our manipulatives and so they're just going to be kind of fun we're just going to do them every once in a while i'm not going to make it um you know a big thing because it is summer and we're gonna be having a lot of fun and i have to tell you we just came inside from being out and i am exhausted already <laughs> um, and we were only outside for like 25 minutes but um, we were pulling some weeds and um, moving the kids' bikes around and stuff. So um, anyways, uh, we spend a lot of our time outside in the summer. We have a pool and so we are like busy, busy, busy all summer long. But we are going to try to keep our skills fresh. And I am going to try to continue with videos over the summer. Um, just kind of sharing with you what I'm working on and what I'm doing. I'm still working on my phonics for reading. Uh, program so I'll be bringing you more videos on that as well and um, so don't fret and then when of course when it gets closer to the school year starting up again I will have some more fresh content for you okay so let's get going okay so far I have um, three books finished and so I have the numbers to 10 book I have the numbers to 20 book and then um, I have the alphabet recognition book. This book I am planning, uh, it's finished. I am planning on adding it to the download, uh, hopefully tonight, so that you guys can start printing this one out. But the other ones are already added to the download. And the reason I have four books here, even though only three of them are finished, is because the numbers to 20 book, I printed out in both color and black and white, just to see what I liked. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm still not sure. so mad, because I just filmed this entire video, and then apparently my camera stopped in the middle of it, and I didn't even know. So now I have to like redo this, and um, oh, it's so frustrating. And now like my kids are being loud. So um, that's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying is I have three, I don't even know where the camera stopped, but hopefully I think it stopped where I was talking about how I have three of the books completed. And um, uh, I printed some of them in color and some of them in only, um, the black and white on the very bright colored paper. And oh my goodness, I already walked you all through this, but I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna pull out this first book and show you how we're gonna use them. And um, I am gonna show you the manipulatives that we use and talk about those again. I can't believe I have to redo this whole thing. Um, technology is not always my friend. Okay, so uh, we have um, these numbers that we like to use and there are magnetic numbers in here. I have magnetic numbers to nine. And then I also have these numbers up here are from Melissa and Doug clocks that we have. They're puzzle clocks. And so I keep them in here because we use them for a lot of things besides just the, the clocks. And then I also have um, some other numbers. These ones here are magnetic numbers as well that I got online somewhere. Um, and uh, I like this pack because they go all the way up to 20. So they've got, you know, the T numbers in here that we can use them in, um, for a manipulative. Um, they're magnetic if we need to use them on a magnetic surface. Uh, and they have um, the picture representation attached to the number. So I really like that as well. And then another set that I have is uh, these ones also go up to 20. These are not magnetic, but they come um, from a Melissa and Doug puzzle. And uh, we do use them with the puzzle, but I also use them for a lot of other activities. And we just kind of pull them out and use those, these as well. And I like that they go all the way up to 20 because a lot of times you can't find, uh, you can only find them up to 10. So I like that. Oh, and then the last one um, that we do also use is my 
movable hundred chart that I've shown you in other videos. Love this thing and I love it because the pieces, we can use them to make our learning multi-sensory um, and they go all the way up to 100. So if we need a number past 20, uh, this is the way to go and we use it for a lot of things. Okay, so I'm gonna pair up these manipulatives with this book for him. Um, the one thing that's really cool about these books is you can take them in the car with just a dry erase marker if you wanted to. And um, once I laminate these, I don't know if I told you in the other part of the video if it got that in there or not, but I have not laminated these yet because I'm waiting for laminating paper to come from Amazon. I ordered some more, but I am out right now. So everything is printed out just on regular paper at the moment and I still have to um, laminate them, but I, mean, I can still show you how we're gonna use them. So once these are laminated, we can take them in the car with a dry erase marker and we are totally cool to take these on trips or whatever we wanna do. Um, but when we are at home, or if you are gonna be using these in the classroom, you can pair them up with manipulatives to make them a little bit more fun. All right, so this book is, um, it has all the numbers through 10, um, and so the kids can you know trace the number, uh, and then they can trace the number word, and then it has a representation on a 10 frame on each page of the number. Now, how we are going to make these a little bit more multi-sensory is um, after he traces it, traces the word, then he can use some manipulatives to count out the number. So the first thing he's gonna do is he's gonna find the number three, and he can put that there right by his number three. And then um, he can use some manipulatives. I just have some erasers here that are kind of summer themed. Uh, they're just ocean, you know, little ocean animals. And uh, he can count out three. So he can do one, two, three, like so, just to kind of make it a little bit more multi-sensory, a little bit more fun. Okay, so he can do that with each of the pages. So those go up to 10. And then after that section, there is another section that looks like this. So this section is where they have to actually count the objects. So each page has um, a little child that is summer themed and uh, they have to count how many is on each page. And so let's go back to the first one. First one here is little girl and she's got sand dollars, one, two, three, four sand dollars. So one of the ways they can do it is they can use the dry erase marker and they can just write the number four. Another way they can do it is they can use their manipulatives to find the number four, put it, go ahead and put it in their, um, put it on their book. And then they can take their manipulatives and count out four. So I'm going to count out four fish here. Put them off to the side. All right. Then they would be finished with that page. You go on to the next one. Okay, then there is another section. So after all these ones where they count and match the numbers, there's another section that looks like this. And it is watermelon. And it gives them a number. Let's just skip to, let's go to number four. It gives them, um, a number, so here is the number four, and then the child has to find all of the watermelon slices down here below that have four seeds on them. Um, if they're using a dry erase marker, they can just circle. If they are uh, wanting to use manipulatives, they can go ahead and take up their manipulatives and just cover up the ones that equal four. So here I see four seeds on that one, so I can cover it up, and I see four seeds on this one and I see four seeds on this one. Okay, so they can do it that way as well if you didn't wanna use the dry erase marker. So it's just another way. Um, so that is that book. Let me go through and show you the next one. So this book is um, numbers to 20. So it goes all the way up through 20. And um, the cool thing about this book, I actually printed it in both color and black and white because I wasn't sure what color I wanted or which one I liked better um, but you can kind of see it, it really doesn't matter. Um, I really like the bright colored paper um, but I'm going to show you it in color this time. So this book is numbers to 20 and the first section they just have to count and write the number. So this here has 10, 11, 12, 13. So they would write 13. Um, another way they could do it is by using their like pieces that I have in here. 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and find number 13. And they could just put it on their page, just like that. Here's 19. So, there it is. There's 13. Wait, is that 13 again? No, 5, 6, eight, that's 8. <laughs> I was thinking I was looking at a double 10 frame again. And then here's 11. So, um, they can either write their numbers or they can go ahead and use their manipulatives as well. Okay, so there is a bunch of pages like that where they have to just count and write the number. Then the next section after that looks like this. This is where they have to mark how many. So looking here, there's just one seed. So they would have to mark number one. They can go ahead and circle it with their dry erase marker and so on. So something else I like to do after they have circled their number, they can find their number on the um, 100 chart and place it over the picture. So here I would place the number one. This is the number 10. So they would circle the number 10. I'm not gonna do it because mine isn't laminated yet. And then after they circle the number 10, they can go ahead and use their 10 piece and cover it up. Um, so it just makes it a little bit more interactive. Okay, and then the next section after that looks like this. This is where they are going to find the missing number. So it says 10 space 12. What's the missing number? The missing number is 11. They can either write it or they can use their manipulatives to put it in. 16 something in 18. The missing number obviously on this one will be 17. So I'm going to take it off my movable 100 chart here and put it on the book. And so they can do that or like again, once again, if it's laminated, they can use a dry erase marker and just write in the missing number. If you're using these in a classroom, you could even just print these out as a quick um, practice on black and white you know, paper as just like a quick worksheet, something like that. Um, but yeah, so that's this section. This section it even has missing numbers at the end. So these ones are missing in the middle. Then there's some missing numbers at the end. And then at the very end, there's traceable numbers all the way through 20. You can see here that kind of look like this. So they can practice what those numbers look like on 10 and 20 frames and then practicing tracing them. And the very last page looks like this and it is for practicing um, your number fluency. So they are gonna say the number, they're gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. They do it properly. They can use their dry erase marker to color in the first smiley face. They're gonna do it again, color in the second one, do it a third time, color in the third one, and then they would be done. But practicing that every single day is great, great, great practice. Um, for remembering their numbers. It's just a great fluency practice for counting. Okay, so then I have one more book to show you. All right, so like I stated, I have three books completed so far. When I'm done, there will be nine books. And so um, if you already have uh, purchased these books, um, the bundle for these books, I am adding this, this alphabet book to the bundle, hopefully tonight. Um, it is ready, as you can see, it's finished. I just have to... Uh, Take some pictures of it and add it, uh, you know, add all the previews and then I can add it to the bundle. And so you can have this book. And like I said, I'm working hard to get all these done. So um, this summer will be a lot of fun. There will be nine of them all together because there's nine different skills I wanted to focus on for preschool. Okay, um, so this book is starting in on some um, of the literacy aspects. So there's some math books that I'm doing and then some literacy books. And this one is the first one and it is on alphabet recognition. And so each page first, um, there's two sections to the book, but first there's a page for each letter of the alphabet. So the kids can go ahead and trace the letter. There is a picture there for them and then the word is there as well. And so um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be pairing up the, each of these pages with either our magnetic letters or I also pulled out our um, beanbag letters that kind of look like this. And so what I'm gonna have him do just as a practice is he's gonna trace the letter, he's gonna say the sound, ah, for apple, because um, we always do a picture clue. So, and then I can even ask him, um, can you think of some other words that start um, with the A sound? There is gonna be a separate book that works on 
um, initial sounds and practicing those phonics skills. Uh, but for right now, um, for this book, it's just focusing on alphabet, but we can talk about the sounds. And then I'm gonna have him go ahead and look through his letters here, find the correct letter and match it up. Now the cool thing about these beanbag letters is that um, one of the side is capital and one side is lowercase. So we can talk about how we have capital A and lowercase a, and then he can trace them with his marker. And we can do that with each and every one of these pages as we practice the sounds. All right, so then um, after we get through our alphabet and practicing the different letters, he loves tracing by the way. Um, after we get through that, doo -doo 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 -doo, trying to get to the end, we can also actually pair these up with, um, I have, and I wasn't expecting to show this to you, but since it's right here, I'm gonna show you really quick. Sorry, I gotta move the camera for like two seconds. Um, this is our, ah, this is our sensory sand. There it is. And uh, in this little tin. And so what you can do is you can, so turn to, you know, whatever letter that you're working on. So here I have V is for vest. And he can trace it on here once it's laminated. And then he can go ahead and use, make sure if you're gonna use a marker that it's closed or use the eraser end of a pencil and then they can make the letter in their sensory sand. Can you see that? So here's capital V and then he can make lowercase V. So that's another way to practice the letters along with it. You could also very easily pair it up with a little bit of um, Play-Doh and have them roll out the Play-Doh and make the letters, you know, obviously. I have some Play-Doh mats as well um, that have alphabet letters and numbers if you're interested. I think I'll leave a link to those below. Um, but they can do that. Okay, and then after they get through the alphabet, what I was gonna show you is the section in the back here is matching up capitals to lowercase. And um, what the kids can do is they can use a dry erase marker. Like I said, every single page on here can be done with just a dry erase marker if you wanted to. Um, so if you were taking these on the go or something. And uh, so they can just you know draw lines and match capital lowercase. Another way to do it is to have them roll out some Play-Doh and then they can make their Play-Doh and they can lay it out and they can match whoop, upper to lowercase <laughs> with their Play-Doh. And then I don't have another piece, but I will go that way. So um, yeah, they could use that as their lines if you didn't want to use your dry erase marker. And so there are just a couple of pages of that as well, practicing matching up those upper to lowercase letters. Another thing I wanna go back really quick and show you, when you're on these pages, practicing tracing and practicing the sounds, um, one cool thing, you know, I'll just get to one, uh, we also do, so after we trace, something else I may have him do is to use his magnetic letters and he's gonna find his capital and his lowercase letter and he's gonna put it over um, B. So after he's traced it, then he can go ahead, put his magnetic letters on there, just as a second sensory uh, type, you know, just to make it a little bit more uh, interactive, like I've been saying. So um, just another option for you to try. You could also have them put the first letter on the word. So I don't know if you can see that down there. Whoop. So that you can have them take their magnetic letter and put the first letter after they've traced. So let's say we're gonna do G. So they trace capital G and lowercase g, and then they go ahead and take their magnetic letter and put it for the first letter, since the first letter in girl is G. So it's just another fun way. So that is, um, those are all the books that I have done so far. Uh, I will leave links below, obviously, where you can get these. You can get them cheaper if you purchase now before all the books are finished. Uh, I will leave a link below. You can each, also get each book separately. So if you just want one book, um, one of them kind of piqued your interest. You can, you know, I have them on my site as uh, individual downloads as well. But yeah, this is what we're gonna be using for um, some pre-K fun over the summer just to keep our skills sharp, but we won't be really doing a whole lot of school over the summer. We like to just kind of have fun, but I don't want them to lose what they've already learned. So it is good to pull things out every once in a while. Oh my goodness, my little guy's talking. So it is good to pull out some things every once in a while 
and keep us fresh. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.